Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another practice session for the RHCE exam where I'm not necessarily giving authoritative information nor am I trying to provide a tutorial, but rather I am going through the objectives myself to see if I can talk about them intelligently and uh, show some examples of how to use the objectives in pseudo real world situations. And the goal is at the end of the video, if I feel like I could talk pretty well about the objective, then I think I'm probably ready for that part of the exam. And then if not, I know what I need to go back and study for myself. Hopefully it'll be a tool that, that you can use to either guide your study or kind of see what I do to handle troubleshooting and the like. Before we dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video, as well as invite anyone who hasn't subscribed yet to click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do, so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you click like, and if there's any others out there you think would benefit from the video, do not hesitate to share it. So in this video, we're still working through the, um, section of the objectives that's be able to perform all tasks expected of a Red Hat certified system administrator. And again, these are the, uh, or rather the objectives in this section are really just the objective headers of the different groups of objectives for the RHCSA exam. So really it's kind of an RHCSA review, which makes sense because from what I have gathered and read, if you want to do well with RHCE, then you need to have a good grasp of what's going on with the RHCSA objectives. So the objective group that we're going to be looking at in this video is manage users and groups. So if I were to go back to the actual RHCSA objectives and find that manage users and groups, there are a few uh, points in this that we're going to go over in this particular video, or rather see if I uh, remember how to do. Because most of my study for RHCE has been pretty much all about Ansible, since that's what most of the exam is. And so this, as I'm getting into my final review for the exam, I'm going through these other objectives, which I encourage you to do as well to see what parts of RHCSA I might need to brush up on to be prepared for RHCE. So we have our Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 workstation. Let's open the terminal and we're going to go ahead and SSH into one of my lab servers. So rel svr01, feed that the password. Did I get it the first try? Maybe? No. Ah, uh, boo. Oh well. If any of you have watched my RHCSA practice session videos where I'm doing pretty much the same objectives, but slowly more methodically, because at that time I was learning the RHCSA stuff, you'll know kind of a running joke was, you know, how many times am I going to fat finger my password during the video? So the first objective we need to look at is create, delete, and modify local user accounts. So the commands that are going to be associated with this are the user add, user del, and user mod command. So I'm going to go ahead and sudo into root, sudo dash i. And the reason I'm doing that is just where I'm not having to type sudo for every single command. In an actual production environment, you probably don't want to do this. You want to do things and then only elevate when you need. But this is practice for an exam. It's also a lab. And, you know, the goal on the exam is get the tasks done, not necessarily in the best practice possible. So thus, here we are. So let's create a couple of users. Um, we'll do user add. Let's see. We'll do user add Rydia, user add Rosa, and that'll work well for us now. Now I'm not doing any parameters with user add. And so what's going to happen when we make this user, it's going to obviously um, create an entry in Etsy passwd for the user. It's going to create a home directory for the user and assign a user a shell. So if I were to go into the man pages for user add, you can configure all of this stuff. And I'm not going to go through all of these, um, these, these different things, nor am I, in my practice, am I stressing about needing to know all of these individual little things, just because you're going to have the documentation available to you on, on the exam. Now, that being said, you cannot just rely on documentation all the time. You do need to have a working knowledge of what's going on. And if I, find a topic in this that uh, I feel like I don't have that working knowledge and obviously I'm going to go back and um, and check that out. If you've watched any of the other videos so far in the series, especially some of the storage stuff, I you know knew what I needed to know to get through RHCSA and since it's not stuff I touch all the time, it tends to fall out of my fingers. So I'm going to have to re-review that before the actual exam. But if you wanted to specify a particular home directory, you can use dash D for that and I think dash S is the shell Let's see, let's scroll down just a bit. And yes, we can specify what shell to use. By default, it's going to be um, be the bash shell. 
Now there's a couple other things I want to show you configuration wise, uh, configuration file wise, because, you know, um, you might be asked on the exam to, to change some defaults for stuff. I can't imagine, you know, why you would do that, but you know, if it's, if it was on the RHCSA and I'm not saying I had to do that on the RHCSA, and even if I knew whether or not I had to do that, I wouldn't tell you because of NDA and such. So the first thing I want to show you, we're going to go into the Etsy directory and we're going to look at the Etsy should be skeleton directory. There we go. And LSAL. Now there's not much in the Etsy skeleton directory. You basically have the, um, the bash profile and such. These obviously are um, configuring your shell environment and what's in the Etsy scale directory. When you create a new user, that's going to be copied into the home directory of the user. So that's how each user gets their, you know, um, bash profile type files because they're in the Etsy scale directory. Now there's one other thing. Um, let's see if I can remember where this is and what this does is give you the defaults for some of your user settings such as password age and I think complexity and such too. Where was that at? Is it Etsy defaults maybe? Let's see. Default directory. Yep, user ad. So let's let's VI into user ad. Take a look at some of this stuff. Yeah, there we go. All right, so in the defaults file, you can establish an expiration date. And I can't remember the um, the format off the top of my head. I might need to look that up before I do RHCE just to make sure. It says where the actual skeleton directory is going to be. You can set what the default shell will be and also where their home directory is going to be. But there's another file that I'm thinking of. Where would that be? Hmm. All right, not in default. Try to, well, you know, if I see it, I'm, well, let me go back to the Etsy directory. If I see it, I'm going to recognize it. So where were you? Hmm. Now, if you have just recently worked with RHCSA, you probably remember this off the top of your head and you're like, go here, go here. Where is that at? I want to try to find it. And one thing that I'm doing with this is let's say that I was on the exam and I needed to find this file. Well, you know, this is probably what I would be doing for troubleshooting wise, which is one of the reasons why I'm recording it in this practice session. So you can kind of see what a real life human does for trying to figure something out if they have, uh, if they have forgotten it. Oh, where's it at? Where's that? Where's that? It wasn't, it's not system D, it's not Etsy defaults. Oh, where are you? It's not past WD, obviously. Mm. All right, I'm going to look just a bit more and then move on. I might come back to it at the end of the video. Ah, it bothers me. It bothers me that I, that I cannot remember this. You know, man user ad. It might tell me in the man page about this. Uh, let's see, user del, yep, group mod, login.defs. So I'll bet that's what I'm looking for. So let's vi login.defs. Ah, yeah, I think this is what I was looking for. Yep, you can set default user. Yes, this is what I was looking for. So if you need to change some of the default password aging things, login.defs is that file that I was wanting. I knew I'd find it. Thank you, man pages, which that's a very important thing if you're preparing for this or the RHCSA exam know that you have your man pages available. Again, you can't just rely on them all the time, but in a pinch like this, they will be of great help to you. So we've made our user accounts. I'm gonna go ahead and set the, um, the passwords for that. So passwd, I think I did Rydia, and we'll make it the most secure password in the world, which of course is monkey123, and how dare it complain about my super secure password, and passwd rosa, and monkey123 for you. All right, so they now have passwords and such. So we'll delete them last, but you know we have to be able to modify local user accounts. Well, one thing we can do is add them to a group. So let's do, let's make a new group. We'll do group add for that. And we'll call this group magic users. Both Rydia and Rosa were magic users in the Final Fantasy IV game. And if we wanted to modify their user account to where they are a part of that group, then we can do user mod. We'll modify Rydia first. A for append groups. And we'll say magic users and Rydia. All right, so if I do the ID command on Rydia, 
we see that Rydia is in her own group, which is a by default thing, and she is in the magic users group. Another thing you can modify, and there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, we can look at the man page for user mod, but something that you might do fairly commonly is add a comment. This is also known as the Geckos comment, and I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head what Geckos, G-E-C-O-S, stands for. I want to think General Electric Company something. Anyway, but if we were to modify that, that gives a comment to the user. Often you'll have your username, and you might have either your friendly name or maybe your full name. And this is where that would be in the uh, you know, passwd entry for that user. So let's add that for Rydia. So we'll say user mod dash c Rydia the summoner Rydia. All right, and let's cat at c passwd and grep for Rydia. Yep, and we see that field there, that would be the Gecko's name, is now Rydia the Summoner. You can also change the actual user ID and such of, of your users. You can also do, um, I think, group mod. Let's, let's see, which group mod. Yeah, and you can do a lot of the similar things to, to your groups as well. To delete account, we use user del. However, there's one thing I do want to point out to you, and let's take a look at it in the man page. If you just use user del and the, the username, the user will be blown away, but their home directory is going, to, um, is going to stay behind. And what you would need to do to be able to get everything is there, I believe it is a recurse option. Let's see if I can find that. I was looking for a different, um, a different command, not different command, it's user del, but there's a, I'm pretty sure it was dash lowercase r that you would, it would get rid of their home directory and such as well. So we have def dash F for force. That's if the user is actually logged in and you're trying to um, delete them, which is generally not a good thing to do. Let's see, dash R, apply changes in, chain, in the cherooted directory. That's, that's not what I want. Hmm. All right, well, let's do a little bit of experimentation then because I am I am fairly certain there was a dash lowercase r for, for getting rid of their directories. Well, let's put it to the test. So user del Rydia. All right, she's gone. Let's ls home, and that's still there. So let's try user del dash r Rosa. All right, I didn't complain, so dash r is probably accurate. ls home, and Rosa's gone. All right, that's gonna, that bothers me. So let's go back to the man page for user del there it is. I don't know how I missed it. I'm sure you're watching the video. You're going, Eddie, it's right there. It's under help. But there it is. So dash R is probably what you're going to do anytime that, that you remove a user. Now, of course, in the enterprise, there may be some situations where you want to keep that around. But just be aware that let's say you have an objective and it's, you know, get rid of this user and all of their stuff. You have to use dash R for that. So the next objective is change passwords and adjust password aging for local user accounts. Well, we've changed passwords with passwd. There's a couple other things you can do with passwd. One is lock an account. So let us remake the Rosa account. So user add um, Rosa. All right, so that's going to make her account again. And I believe it's passwd-l. But before we do that, I want to cat the Etsy shadow file for, or let me say add a password first. So passwd rosa monkey123. And now let's cat the etsy shadow file and grep for rosa. Okay, so we see we have the, you know, hash and salt and then your uh, your password there that's, that's, that's encrypted. We have a couple of other um, fields here. I can't remember off the top of my head what each field is. You can look up a man page for the Etsy shadow file and it'll explain all that. I do know that all nines, that is the fact the password is not set to expire. But the passwd-l command will, will lock a user account. Doesn't delete it, just makes it to where they're not going to be able to log in. So let's do that. Passwd-l rosa. All right, locking account for user Rosa, and it says success. Let's take a look at the Etsy shadow file. 
Notice that we now have the two exclamation points. That indicates that, that the account is locked. Now I'm curious, let's see if I can SU-L into Rosa. And I probably can because I'm root, yeah. It's like, root's kind of like the honey badger of Linux, right? It just doesn't care, it'll do what it wants. Let's make a new window here. And let's see if I can SSH in as Rosa with her account being locked. We, sh we should not be able to do this, but let's look. Rosa at lab-rel svr01. Monkey123. Yeah, permission denied. Please try again. Let's just make sure I didn't fat finger monkey123 and I did not. And then we should get the permission denied again. All right, so let's, let's see. L is locked. Maybe pass WDU for unlock. Let's check out the man page for that. Yep, U for unlock. So pass WD dash U Rosa. Yep, unlocked it. And let's see if we can SSH as her. Monkey one, two, three. Yep, and there we go. We can SSH in as her. Now there's another command called C-H-A-G-E. I like calling it change because I think it sounds cool, but it's like change password age. Now there's a lot of things you can do with change. You can lock an account with change, but you can also set when both passwords and the user accounts themselves expire. Let's take a look at the man page real quick because I can't remember off the top of my head the exact. Uh, okay, so we can set the dash D is when the let's see, last day, set number day since... Yep. All right. That's not what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of expir yeah, dash E expiration date. So whose count is locked. Yep. So that has to be unlocked. You have, well, I'm going to do change dash L for Rosen because that'll show you some stuff here. Yeah. So password expires, password inactive account expires. I want to think lowercase e. Let's see. Dash E. Um, I thought there was a lowercase e thing. Now notice it gives you uh, an example with the date command. This is very useful and quite frankly this would be something that if you're doing RHCA I would probably, or RHCSA, I would consider uh, memorizing this. But I'll, I'll show you this in practice. We'll do the expire date and see what happens with Rosa. So, got our date command. The date dash D allows you to Specify a date that, that you want to see, such as, let's see, 1-31-2021. I think that'll, that'll work. Yep. You can also do things such as plus 10 days. All right. Notice that says July 20th. But what we want is just the month, no, I'm sorry, year, month, day is what we want for that. So what we can do is dash D plus 10 days, and we can also do a format of that. And I want to think, let's take a look at the man page for date. I can't remember the format off the top of my head. Uh, where's that? There, there, there's one, I mean, you can do, you know, percent lowercase m, uh, percent lowercase d, I think, but there's one that does everything that you want. I'm trying to remember what that is. Full date, yeah, percent uppercase F is what I'm thinking of. So dash F percent uppercase F. Nope. Printing or specifying dates printing mutually exclusive. I don't remember that being mutually exclusive. Let's take a look at the man for change again because I'm clearly misremembering that as the with the example that it gave. Oh um yeah plus is what I'm looking for. <sighs> Minus plus. Come on, Eddie. There we go. That's what I'm wanting. And so this should work. And so what we're going to do is change dash E. And we're going to do a subshell of date dash D plus 10 days. Percentage F. And we'll do Rosa. All right. And let's do change dash change. Not cage dash L Rosa. Yep, there we go. So account expires and the, I guess, yeah, the last password change, that makes sense. Now, that is the account expiration. What I want is just password expiration. So let's take a look. Is that dash D? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. E is expired for the account. The D is that last day for the password. So let's do this. 
So we'll do change dash D and we'll do our date command again, date dash D. Um, we'll do plus one day then percent F Rosa. All right, change dash L Rosa. What? I didn't say it expired. All right, let's try this again without doing the little fancy date stuff. Let's say 7, 11, 20, 21, Rosa. Change dash L. Change dash L, Rosa. All right, this is annoying me here. Set the day the last password changed to last day. Yes, and we did that. All right, so what if this happens on the exam? We have to make it work. Date may also be expressed in, yeah, in the format. And that's what our percent %f did. Or, yeah, percent %f. Let's try it again without that. So D, am I doing D right? Yeah, change dash D. Let's do this. 2021 07 11 Rosa. Change dash L Rosa. What is going on here? Why is that not expiring? I'm just curious. Let's do a different one. 20 Rosa. Change dash L Rosa. So seeing the last, okay, last password change. I feel like a bit of a fool on my own practice session video, but this is why you do these. I guarantee you when you're doing your own exam prep, you're going to like beat your head against a wall for a while and go, why didn't I see this? It's been doing exactly what I've been telling it to do, which is set the la the date of the last password change. So let's say you wanted to manipulate that. What I want is the dash M and dash capital M. So let's try this again. K change dash M. So the minimum number of days before the password changes, I'm going to say one and Rosa. Change dash L Rosa. You're kidding me. Wait, no. Minimum number of password days, uh, days between password, before password can, before password change. Yeah, I am just failing all over the place. Clearly, I need to spend some time with change. All right, I'm going to go on in the practice session and just take a note that clearly just expiring passwords, I, I am not doing well with change. I'm curious, though, PassWD has that. Hmm. That's odd. I, I, I thought that I, I had that under my fingers, but clearly I do not. All right, moving on. So we have created, delete, well, we haven't deleted the group yet. So we've uh, modified the local uh, membership of a group. So let's go ahead and delete our group. So group Dell, uh, what do we call it? Magic users. There we go. And if we were to cat Etsy group, we see that magic user is not there. We just have Rosa and Eddie admin. And lastly, super user access. So what this is going to be is configuring sudo access, which in working with Ansible is very important as we'll get to when we get to the uh, practice sessions actually working with Ansible. And what we're gonna be working on with that is a command called vi sudo and a particular directory. So let's go into etsy sudoers.d, sudoers dot d and there's nothing in there now because if i go up one level and let's vi etsy sudoers this is our configuration for sudo now there are all sorts of different things that 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 you can do with this what you'll commonly be doing in ansible is basically giving a user account sudo privileges and to where they don't actually have to enter a password to to elevate to sudo so if you take a look at root here this is really what what you're going to, to need. So you have user account. I can't remember off the top of my head what each of these fields are for. Something like all hosts, um, all, I'm trying to think. I can't remember what this refers to. And then this is all commands. So what we would do is basically you would be copying and pasting this in either adding another line to the Etsy sudo uh, Etsy sudoers file, or better yet, if you're in an actual you know production environment, you would create files in the 
Etsy sudoers.d directory, which are then, of course, read into sudo to where you have a little bit more, I guess, control over, over what's, what's happening. Notice that you have the percent wheel that is for group names and there's that no pass WD all. So let's say that I wanted to grant that to Rosa. So what I will do is vi sudo dash f etsy sudoers dot d and we're just going to call it Rosa. And we're going to simply have Rosa all equals all another all no pass wd all now all right so it's complaining about the syntax error so i clearly made a mistake so let us edit see what did i do what was my mistake rosa all equals all all no pass wd all odd so let's exit out and we are going to quit and save the changes or i guess we're not going to well yeah Capital Q. Let's cat Etsy sudoers and let's see where I made my mistake. Oh, I had an exp. Ah, all right, that makes sense. So I'm saying all commands no pass WD. We don't need the extra aw there. So sudoers.d slash Rosa. We'll get rid of this and vi sudo should not complain this time. Let's su dash l log in to Rosa's account. So I am Rosa and let us do sudo vi. That's an account for sudo contact system administrator. I just added her to that. Weird. Is there something that I have to reset? That's an account in an account section for sudo. I just had that file in, um, in the sudoers. All right, this is weird. So let's see. You know, case in point, this might happen on the exam for you, and so you have to troubleshoot. So let's vi sudoers and see where I've made, where I potentially have made the mistake. Nothing looks weird here. Include, and that and it explicitly tells you that is not a comment. Sudoers.d. All right, so let's quit out of this. All right, so that's in sudoers.d. And vi sudo didn't complain, so let's do this. Let's remove that file and let us just use vi sudo and add Rosa to this. All right, so we'll add it underneath this line here. Rosa all equals all no pass wd all. All right, it didn't complain. Su dash l into Rosa and sudo vi i can't <laughs> i think we expired did we expire her account we must have so let's w let's do this you know now i'm curious let's try this one more time yeah accounts expired hmm well that would make sense so let us unexpire her account i'm just going to reset her password that should be should be what we need. So pass WD Rosa. I actually give it a decent password this time. Of course, I fat finger it. All right. So change dash L Rosa. I wonder if that's UTC. So her account shouldn't be expired yet because we're not July 11th. Let's see. What's the date on this server? Yeah, July 10th. So we shouldn't be expired. Okay, so let's take a look at change real quick again. We'll remove account expiration date, negative one. All right, so change dash E, negative one, Rosa. Change dash L, Rosa. All right, so that's now a never. And let's see if we can SSH in as Rosa. That's weird because unless, let's see, date dash u all right well utc is july 11th but didn't realize that 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 went off of that clock i figured it would be the um local time zone anyway s well let's see we logged in as rosa of course i exited that session s u l rosa now let's try pseudo vi and we get what we want so so you cannot do that if the accounts expired hmm. well that would make sense all right so i think that 
covered everything. The only pending thing for me is the um, setting the password expires date, which that bothers me. I'm not going to keep um, digging to it in this video. I'll, as I said, I'll just add that to my list of things I need to review uh, before RHCE as a part of another uh, review session. Hopefully you found this video useful for you. I know that um, it's not quite a tutorial as far as I'm saying, hey, do X, Y, and Z, but it's rather just me going through the objective to see if, if, if I remember what's going on. And the benefit for, for you, the viewer, especially if you're working toward RHCE, you might find like a way that I troubleshoot something in one of these that it would be helpful for you, and, and, and hopefully it is. If you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure you do click like and share with others that might find it useful. Feel free to leave comments with the video. You can either ask questions, give praise, give critique. It's all good, um, you know, w w within reason with that. And I'll respond as I both have time and ability. I want to again thank returning subscribers for watching another video and remind you if you haven't subscribed yet to do that and ring the bell when you do. Thanks again for taking the time to watch and I will see you the next time.